Hello and hello. Thank you for joining me today. In fact, there should be a slightly above average amount of you viewing this video because of this bright green shirt in the thumbnail. That seems to help. I'm not kidding. Um, I don't know how I, how I haven't watched this video yet. It's, it's a Meet the Germans video, one of my favorite series. DW Euro Max. In the house. It's German food. I don't know how. I'll, I'm just surprised I haven't watched it. Let's change that. Go check out DW Euro Max. All right, let's watch. What? Can you hear? I can't hear. I can't hear. What's that clip of Bill O'Reilly? I got nothing in my headphones or something. Okay. Bratwurst, Spätzle, Sauerbraten. Ooh, I like the Sauerbraten. Falsche I'll take that. Hase, Maultaschen. That looks Chinese. Maultaschen. Himmel und Ad. What is that? Himmel und Ad? I wonder what Ad is. I mean, I don't know what Himmel is, but it's clearly something and something. It's um, patties and taters. Schweinshaxe. Let me be very German about this and give my honest opinion of traditional German dishes. Mm. They're often very filling, pretty meaty, and usually sit somewhere on the spectrum of beige to brown. <laughs> German food often... The meat spectrum. ...and tastes good, but looks not so great. Let's see what this German foodie makes of my assessment. Also, ja, ich meine, ich arbeite ja auch als Foodfotograf und wenn man mal so einen Gulasch fotografieren muss, dann ist es schon... I wasn't prepared for the, um... For the fast speaking German man to come on the screen. So I kind of missed a lot of these subtitles. So, yeah, I mean, I work also as a food photographer, and when you have to do a photography, then it's already a small challenge. But witzigerweise, almost all understand under these dishes soul food. Why do I have this perception that there's a lot of like creative people in Germany? A lot of photographers and videographers and graphic designers. Maybe that's, I don't know, that's probably a misconception, but that's like, I just see a lot of them in videos and stuff. Also, wenn du so, ne, so Essen, was ein gutes Gefühl vermittelt, was mit Erinnerungen verbunden ist, was irgendwie so wohlfühlen, dann ist es total oft der Braten, das Schnitzel. Dann ist es egal, wenn es nicht so schön ist, das gibt halt ein gutes Gefühl. Und wie würdest du traditionelles deutsches Essen I tend to agree, but at a certain, there's like a threshold it has to pass in terms of looks. It can't look like someone already ate it. Well, I guess some oatmeal is okay. Ein deutsches Essen hat eine Sättigungsbeilage zu haben. Es gibt quasi nichts ohne eine Kartoffel, eine Nudel. Ganz klassisches Gericht von meinen. I love pasta and potatoes. Ein aus meiner Kindheit von meinen Großeltern waren Nudeln und Bratkartoffeln. Oh, pasta with fried potatoes. Never had that. Carbs with carbs with carbs. Yeah, usually. It, usually here in America, you either have spaghetti or pasta or or potatoes or bread. Not all three. Und was kochst du für uns gleich? Ich koche heute für uns Schnitzel, weil das ist halt wirklich, also gerade auch so, wenn ich an meine Kindheit und uns Aufwachsen denke, so dieses ja typischste deutsche Gericht, was es bei uns total oft gab. Of course, the Schnitzel came to Germany via Austria. I don't know what a schnitzel is. Germany is bordered by nine different countries. I've heard that, I've probably heard that word 5,000 times. I don't know exactly what that is. And you can see the influence of those neighbors on regional cuisine near the borders. As well. I can't believe it's nine countries. If you had asked me, just how many, how many countries border Germany? By nine different countries. I would have, like, first thing, first, like, top of the mind guess, I would have said, like, four. And you can see the influence of those neighbors on regional cuisine near the borders. As well as regional differences, there's a seasonal aspect too. Many Germans get very excited about particular seasonal foods, such as asparagus, strawberries. I know about the asparagus. That's kind of weird. Cherries. I get excited about strawberry season. Or kale. Grünkohl essen is a special occasion when people get together to eat the leafy green usually served. Why does this sausage look? It looks something. something. Is that a sausage? It looks kind of, I don't know. Mm, uh, I don't know what, like, what, like, um, like something a cannibal would eat. With cured sausage. Hmm. Does oh, it's cured. Does barbecuing count as a seasonal speciality? In any case, as soon as the first rays of sun appear in late spring, the Germans are ready to grill. The first barbecue of the year is known as Angrillen. 
And in one study, a decisive 97% of Germans said they liked to grill. Wow, 97% of you like to grill. Not just eat barbecue food, but you like to grill. Some key components at a German barbecue, lots of meat, potato salad, mustard, mustard and of little course. bread rolls that are completely impractical for putting <laughs> sausages in. Well, it is sort of impractical, but on the other hand, it kind of gives you that handle right in the middle. Like you need something. That's like the perfect size of a palm. So you can eat it from both sides and then eat the middle. So on, on one hand, it is practical if you, if you love meat and you don't want much bread getting in the way. Talking of bread, it's obviously a- I love bread though. Huge part of the food culture here. So important in fact, I already made- a Is pumpernickel a German word? A whole episode about it. Do check that out. But what else do we know about German tastes? The nation's favorite meat is pork. Around 5% of the population is vegetarian and 1% vegan. The top <laughs> I wonder what percent of US is vegan, hold up. I mean, the reason I laughed is because, I don't know, there's something funny about a vegan German. Like, no, no offense to you vegan Germans out there. I just think you, there's so much sausage and, and pork and stuff in your country. It's almost like an oxymoron to have a vegan German. But um, only 3% of Americans are, are vegan. So I guess it's not, I mean, that's, that's three times less than here in America. So there you go. Top rated vegetables are tomatoes, carrots, onions, and cucumber. Fav All very good. 10 out of 10 veggies. Favorite fruits are bananas, apples, oranges, and melons. The country also has a I deep agree. relationship with potatoes in every form. Kartoffel is even a somewhat derogatory term for someone who is very German. Finally, some. <laughs> Does that mean potato? Kartoffel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kartoffel. Kartoffel. Kartoffel is even a somewhat derogatory term for someone who is very German. <laughs> Finally, some herbs and spices you might spot regularly in- She pronounced the H in, in herbs. Herbs. German recipes, parsley, dill, or in some regions, caraway seeds. Okay, now we've really worked up an appetite. Take it away, Zasha. I am hungry. Dann haben wir hier unsere klassische Panierstraße. Erst ins Mehl. Dann nächste Runde ist einmal in das geschlagene Ei. Und dann kommt's in die Panade. Wir haben jetzt hier eine Mischung aus so Flakes. Und Panko, was wiederum witzig okay, ist. Okay, are we frying this? Japanisches Paniermehl. Und ich denke, das ist eine schöne Möglichkeit, so diese urdeutschen oder urklassischen Gerichte so ein bisschen zu modernisieren. Das kommt jetzt so für zwei Minuten von jeder Seite bei einer mittleren Hitze. Auf gar keinen Fall zu heiß, so dass es schön sprudelt beim Anbraten. Schnitzel und Kartoffel geht halt Hand in Hand. Ob das jetzt Bratkartoffeln, Pommes, Salzkartoffeln sind. Okay, I need to look up exactly like what, what makes it a Schnitzel. Is it the breading? Um, uh, it's just a thin slice of meat. No wonder I didn't, like that's so broad. Just a thin slice of meat is a schnitzel. I guess I love schnitzel too. I think the thinner the meat, the better. Oh yeah, this looks good. To express that you hope someone enjoys their meal, you can say guten appetit or more casually guten hunger. But if you're feeling particularly ah, German, why not throw Mahlzeit into the mix? It literally means meal time, but particularly around lunchtime, it's a perfectly acceptable greeting. The appropriate <laughs> response is Mahlzeit. Mahlzeit. That's cool. That's cool. Mahlzeit. So it's a greeting. It's kind of like saying good morning, except it's like it's it's lunchtime. Yeah, it's lunchtime. You know it. Oh yeah, we eaten. I'm outside. Oh man, we don't have anything like that here in America. Outside. Mmm, that's Talking of meal times, at breakfast the Germans are generally split into two camps. Bread with cold cuts, egg, cheese, or sweet spreads, or some kind of muesli cereal or porridge. The main warm meal of the day is traditionally taken. Is there a difference between porridge and oatmeal? 
I don't know what porridge is. Nobody eats it here. And at lunchtime. Having grown up eating cold lunches, usually sandwiches, I still can't adjust to this. Especially because it can take quite a while to recover from an enormous portion of hot German grub in the work canteen. Oh, and lots of Germans have lunch really That sound effect was nasty. Really early. I have colleagues who go to lunch before midday. The evening meal could be as simple as... Uh, that's not super uncommon here. Before midday, like 11.30. People, people definitely be maltziding at 11.30 here in America. Arm board or evening bread, which to be honest is kind of like having breakfast all over again. But habits are changing and around a third of Germans now eat their main warm meal in the evening. According to a recent huh, report- That's, that's... That is something I, I had no idea. Hold on. Okay, I had to rewatch a minute of that because I was like wait what, what what they eat the warm meal in the eat some some of you guys don't eat a warm meal in the evening what and I rewatched it and she's because she said at lunchtime you guys eat a warm meal and I'm like okay a lot of people eat well a warm meal at lunch but I didn't think of that as being a replacement for your warm meal at dinner but it sounds like that's what she was saying a lot of you guys eat a warm meal at lunch and then like a smaller meal, like not not prepared in, an, in the oven and the stove at dinner, like a more simple cold meal for dinner. That's actually crazy. I had no idea. But now a lot of you guys are changing. Okay. Whew. Wow. Interesting. Uh, yeah, if you're going to eat a cold meal here here in America, it would typically be lunch. And dinner is almost always warm and big. Fascinating. But lunch is also pretty big here, too, in America, because it's America. According to a recent report, three quarters of... And so is breakfast. Germans enjoy cooking. When they're not in lockdown, around a half eat out at least once a month. And not in lockdown? What year is this? What year is it? Jumanji. Oh, two years ago. Whew. And a quarter eat fast food once a week. The international cuisine on offer in Germany is telling of the country... I need to rewatch that. I was thinking about COVID. <laughs> ...and enjoy cooking. When they're not in lockdown, around a half eat out at least once a month. And a quarter eat fast... Only a, ha only a half of you eat out once a month? Dang, you guys must be saving money over there. I eat out multiple times a week. <laughs> like, I mean, usually usually twice. Are we counting fast food? Food once a week. The internet. Okay, once a week fast food. I eat fast food um, more than that. <laughs> National cuisine on offer in Germany is telling of the country's immigration history. A small shop or stand offering speedy takeout food is called an imbiss. Oh, I want to go to an imbiss. Which comes from the an imbissel. Old German for meal. But what about in between meals? The most popular snacks in Germany are chocolate and crisps. I can't for the life of me understand the nation's obsession with paprika flavor. <laughs> I bought some paprika flavored ramen. Ugh. I just got done. I finally finished that pack of ramen. Now I can get something else. Um. But chocolate and crisps, okay. Okay. I'm a fan. I prefer more of a, um, what's the, like a, like a gummy as a snack. You know what I'm saying? And I know some of you guys out there, the Har Har Haribo, Haribo gummies, gummy bears. But hey, each to their own. Okay, what's for dessert? I was a little disappointed to find that this course doesn't seem to get that much attention here. But cake lovers fear not. They're really, I'm surprised. You don't have German chocolate shake, chocolate cake for every dessert. As always, Kaffee and Kuchen, coffee and cake to look forward to. This traditional German pastime, which dates back to the 17th century, is something you typically do with your parents or your grandparents in the afternoon. For the full experience... How bizarre. Because it's like they're eating coffee and donuts, which is something Americans do all the time in, in the morning. Check out the fancy coffee cups and cake forks. 
Some classic German cakes include Schwarzwälder Kirschtorte, or Black Forest Gatto, Bienenstich, which means bee sting, and Marmorkuchen, marble cake. Mm. Tell me your German food likes and dislikes below, and look out for more German food delights over on Instagram, dw underscore meet the Germans. Oh. <laughs> Is it over? It's over. I'm just watching her eat cake now. Oh, that was fun. That was very fun. Go check out DW Euromax. <sighs> Guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for existing. Thank you for the memes and thank you for the dreams. Just don't let your dreams be memes. I hope I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>